Hello, everyone, and thank you for attending the Cabo Virtual Job Fair event. I would like to introduce you to Rob. Rob will tell you about his company, job openings, and how to apply for those openings. Rob? Uh, yes, welcome, everybody. Again, uh, my name is Rob Zapola. I'm the Talent Acquisition Manager for Cabo Broadband and our parent company, uh, Prince Telecom. Uh, to give you a little bit about it, I know it says uh, Prince Telecom on the bottom, but essentially that's our parent company. Uh, again, Cabo is the same thing. We're a national leader in telecommunication field. I'm currently hiring for uh, cable installation technicians, which that includes, you know, installing cable, telephone, internet for most of the major cable companies nationwide. Uh, again, in the Chicagoland area, again, that's going to be, you know, uh, you know, Comcast, Spectrum, Charter areas. Also in Michigan, we do uh, Cabo as part of the Michigan, Detroit area. Again, we have that's where we have multiple openings. We obviously offer uh, growth potential and off. And the best part is we do pay training. So somebody does not have to necessarily have experience in any of this. Again, we'll talk a little bit more about that and the competitive benefits uh, and for our qualified applicants. Next slide, please. Again, uh, I'm, you know, this job is again a full time uh, position. I uh, just give you a little bit of an overview of what this install entails. Again, I'm looking for cable cable installation technicians, which again that will be, you know, installing, you know, uh, cable, in a, you know, internet and phone. Uh, again, we've all had the experience of having someone come to our house, probably Comcast or you know some other company doing our cable, internet, and phone. That's exactly what this job entails. So again, you know, it's going to be requiring us to, you know, install, disconnect, reconnect, uh, you know, add-ons, troubleshoot, other areas within all those three fields: the telephone, internet, and phone, and alarm. I did, I did forget to mention the alarm system so, because Comcast does do the alarm. Um, again, you know, uh, the biggest thing with this job is, and we're going to be working outside, you know, again, all jobs do require, um, you know, the process starts outside, right? The feed, the feed for the, you know, the, the inner, I mean, the cable is, is, it starts from the outside. So that again, depending on where the feed may come in, that might be again, in some neighborhoods, it's up, starts on, a t you know, up on like kind of the power line poles, kind of like where you'll see those big, all halfway up the pole, all those big dangling big lines. Those are data lines. Those are fiber optic lines that are transferring all you know the data for the telecommunication industry. Again, so the feed is up at the pole. So that might require us to be able to you know climb a ladder and get up to that feed to check you know make sure everything's in working order. Check the actual drop, which that means is the cable that is running from that pole down to a residence. That could be business or you know someone's personal residence or apartment complex. So we do have to check the feed, make sure the strength is well. Again, you know, that we have to work in, you know, all types of weather that might require us to, you know, obviously work in rain, heat, cold, snow, etc. So again, you know, that's one first part, and obviously, to be able to familiarity with tools and, you know, you know hand tools, again, you know, I'm not saying it has someone has to be, you know, 10 years of experience of it, but, you know, again, something that's going to, you know, they're familiar with power, you know, like a cordless drill, screwdrivers, pliers, et cetera. Again, that, that part, a meter, we're using meters to tend to test the strength of the signal to make sure that it's, you know, something has to be replaced or something needs to be tweaked. So again, it's a, you know, a big monitor that's going to test the strength, like the signal. Uh, again, customer service is always a big part of this job. Why? Because we're interacting with our customers and our customers. You know, we are going and currently again during these you know trying times. We are being very very safe. You know, with our you know co and our COVID protocol, again providing all PPE necessary PPE and asking you know obviously screening questions to all uh, customers in the field before we our technician goes out. Again, but we have you know again going back to the customer service, being able to deal with you know customer service with our customers in their home, ask for any type of questions, etc., in a professional manner. Uh, next slide, please. Again, qualifications, okay, um, you know, like a lot of employers do, first one, obviously, qualifications would be, you know, um, in the hiring process, all applicants are, will have to be required to go, you know, so, you know go through a driving, you know, motor vehicle uh, check, obviously, this job does require a driver's license, you will be using a company vehicle to do your job, so again, that's a big requirement is to have, you know, uh, have a driver's license, we'll be checking your uh, motor vehicle check, background, and drug screen, again, this is for, uh, you know, for the cable, you know, telecommunication industry. So those checks need to be on the up and up. Uh, again, like I already uh, talked about, you know, the you know, obviously familiarity with hand tools, uh, customer service is a big one. 
you know, timely, you know, these, these things do have, you know, appointments. I'm sure we're all heard the nine to 12 or 12 to two, those appointments. So again, you know, we are bound by those type of schedules. You know, the technician does on, on an average work, you know, about five to seven jobs a day. You know, again, this does require potential weekends. So again, there might be involvement with, um, it might involve, you know, we're you know, having days off during the week. Again, where it says at the bottom for qualifications, uh, again, you know, it's a six months. Again, you know, I'm just, we're just looking for somebody that has the capability of, you know, being able to what I'm explaining. You know, again, you're going, you might be, you know, using a ladder, you might be outside, you might be hanging tools, et cetera. So somebody that has that capability and knowledge, again, we, we definitely, that's what we're kind of looking for. Uh, next slide, please. And physical requirements. Again, this, you know, we're, we're, we're like, you know, sometimes we're doing this type of job, we are, obviously like i said a ladder potentially sometimes like I, I forgot to mention that uh the feed might be if it's in a community that all the lines are underground there'll be like like pedestals or po like like a box sticking out of the ground between two homes or or uh in like a apartment complex it might be a whole panel so those th so that is not required the feed that's where the feed is so again it might not be that but again when we're doing this job we do have to you know per, you know be able to be physical to climb potential ladder crawl you know the feed might have to be we have my crawl space you know we might have to crawl we might have to be up in you know potentially attic or uh below stooping you know low low areas we might have to you know work in so again that those those type of you know requirements are definitely you know you have to think about it it's like that's what you know you have to be physically capable of doing that type of thing we already talked about you know again you know uh working in the weather different types of weather you know again like i said the job we're, we're showing up someone's house we have to check make sure everything's on the outside is good so we you know again that might whatever the weather is we do have to work in that type of weather um again you know um you know you know lifting okay i mean ladder you know if we, i'm sure we've all got you know familiar with like sometimes when we look at ladders for example we have to be physically capable of carrying a ladder we might have to you know carrying that ladder you know some of those ladders are a little longer so they're kind of awkward so you, know, you got to be physically fit to be able to handle that we say you know like 50 to 100 pounds but again but you know you know 50 is definitely we have to be able to manage that uh, a lot of sometimes these cables we're helping in the warehouse we might be moving a spool of uh, cable or so so that you know, that's a little bit of a heavy so again just you know being physically capable of handling those types of uh you know those weights next slide please now benefits um again i'll you know this is a job like you said full-time it is uh you know full you know full benefits you know paid time off paid holiday we talked about the company vehicle cell phone that is where you know we're being dispatched we see our, all our jobs We'll give you all the cable specific related tools, you know, the cable, you know, specialty stuff you can't find in a store. Obviously, fuel and reimbursement for the company vehicle, you know, medical dental vision, life, life insurance, long term disability, short term disability, 401k. And we also offer, you know, a company stock purchase program. Um, and as far as the pay, I, you know, definitely look at it this way, you know, again, we do offer pay training once the training is paid, you know, done. What I do see is on average that technicians usually make somewhere rough up to about, you know, roughly up to a thousand dollars a week. And to put a little icing on the cake, we're currently offering a $1,000 sign on bonus. So there's, that's even better. I know right now everybody's getting, you know, all it's, we're doing good with tax time and all that good stuff, but we're also offering a 1000 sign on bonus currently right now so that you know this is a great time to you know get on get aboard and join the you know the cavo the cavo team next slide okay next step is how to apply what i what i like you know what i like to do is again there's a couple ones that are right here one you can definitely go to our website you know i on it's attached here the www.cavocommunications.com at the top right, you will see the career tab. What that will bring up is kind of a map of the, the greater you know, Chicago area and, and show you all our jobs available. And you can definitely click on the one that's closer to you. We have a lot of different areas in the uh, Chicago land area, uh, all into Indiana. Click on that, definitely apply that way. Or again, if, I, if you, know, you want to just send a resume to, you can send it to rec recruiting at cobblecommunications.com. And again, once you do apply, I guarantee you, uh, one of the, the uh, one of the, the recruiter will be in contact with you probably within the day that that day you submit it, it you know, or if not the next day, very, very, very quick, you know, to give you and she will definitely go over very detailed She'll go over even deeper than I am now. I'm just trying to give everybody a little bit of an overview of what this job looks like and the requirements and, you know, 
show you, you see if there's any interest, but she'll go over in greater detail all the details of the job and, and spend probably a good 20 minutes with you talking about every little thing about the job and the, and the onboarding process. Um, next slide. Other than that, that's kind of what, that's pretty much it, folks. I, you know, again, it's, you know, pretty straightforward. Um, I do welcome any questions that somebody might have regarding this position. Fantastic. Thank you for that presentation, Rob. And as Rob just stated, if you do have any questions um, regarding employment with Cavo, please feel free to enter those into the chat and we will get those answered for you. Uh, Rob, I do have some questions that I'd like to ask you while we're waiting for some participant questions. And I am going to go back a slide here so folks have that information on the screen while we're going through this. So Rob, my first question that I have is how long does the hiring process typically take from the point of submitting an application to actually being hired? I know you said that your recruiters get in contact real quick, but what's the you know start to finish time frame tend to be? Okay, well, you know, again, with the uh, onboarding process with the, you know, drug, you know, the background check and drug screen that, you know, drug, you know, that's going to be that's pretty quick. I mean, again, obviously, once somebody, you know, get, you know, goes for goes to the screen with my recruiter, obviously set you up for an interview, obviously, you will be interviewing with the hiring manager in the Chicagoland area once that that could take, you know, that could take the next couple of days to schedule that interview once the hire process then obviously if the an offer is being made obviously then you'd be offered us offer letter and you know consent for the uh, starting the backgrounds stuff and drug screen so what you know backgrounds that depending you know on the candidates you know how many times you know you know how many places they might have lived in their life you know multiple states multiple counties juris jurisdictions uh charges if they have any that really that that's gonna slow that up sometimes that could take the background check could take a couple of days it could take a week take a week and a half that's really depend on the person it's hard to say um drug screen is pretty quick once you know obviously some you know the uh, script is given a person has about three you know about three, two days three days to do the drug screen so that's pretty quick and then that's it's yes or no as you know <laughs> did we pass or we did not but usually the average take you know, time i would say honestly is about you know roughly two about two weeks you know go, you know it could be four it could be a little to do the whole thing so it's like it could be before that it could be just a little bit longer than that like i said depending on all the variables that i mentioned so the first Fantastic. day start. The first day start, and usually the training process. So I'll put that in the training process. You just on an average about four weeks. Fantastic. Thank you for that thorough response, Rob. And you did mention something that um, actually comes up frequently on a lot of these events as well, and that is kind of that background check process. Now I know a lot of folks in HR, you know, have uh, outside folks that conduct that for them. But a question that does come up is. Would any sort of misdemeanor offenses or minor uh, petty offenses be disqualifying factors for folks who would be applying for a job with Cabo? Well, um, that's going to depend on the nature of the charge. You know, um, it depends on the, it really going to be depending on the charge. So, I mean, I think, you know, you know, any type of felonies and whatnot you might have, you probably would not. And I'm not the, and again, I'm not that part of HR to make that determination. I don't do that. I'm only stating what I've witnessed. Okay. So it's not what I say. It's not concrete, but, you know, definitely smaller, you know, like, you know, small crimes that are unrelated. Like I have, for example, you know, like if you had like some like, you know, traffic violations now, now, if you had some type of like child support situation, for example, I'm just using that because I see that a lot uh, that, that might, that probably would not, we would definitely, they're really looking at us because you're going in people's homes. You're looking for, you know, things that would be unfortunately looked down upon, you know, look, down upon as far as, you know, like going in people's homes, like, you know, theft and, you know, other more serious types of crimes would probably be the big red flag. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Thank you for that, Rob. Another question that I have for you, uh, is there any sort of educational requirement that folks need to possess in order to apply for any of the positions that you covered here today? Uh, high school. So either a GED or high school diploma yep. would yep. be, mm -hmm. would suffice? Yep, yep. Fantastic. absolutely. Fantastic. Thank you, Rob. Another question that I have for you is, uh, would you be able to elaborate a little bit more on your shifts? And is there a particular shift that you all are recruiting for over others? Yes, uh, pretty much. Uh, the It's a first shift kind of hours, honestly. We don't really necessarily work at night. <laughs> so, or, you know, or in between, usually the hours usually range on, you know, depending on the situation, but usually we operate from the hours of about 
eight o'clock, you know, seven thirty to about six o'clock at night. Now that that could vary, but that's really going to be dependent on as we're all, like I said, we're all familiar with those time frames, right? The first appointment is usually, you know, like eight eight to ten, and then like ten to noon, noon to two, stuff like that. Uh, now, again, that that's kind of like the time frame. I would say it could, it could vary. Your day could be shorter. It could be slightly longer, depending on the depending on the appointment times. But usually, it's usually around the daylight hours. Excellent. Thank you, Rob. And can you kind of go through what the interview process might look like for folks that are on the call? Just kind of a general sense to give them an idea of what that would look like. Uh, yes. Uh, I want, again, like I once said, you uh, apply. Uh, my recruiter uh, recruiter will go over a thorough of the job in very greater detail than I'm doing now. <laughs> Just, you know, and then at that point, again, if someone says, yep, that's, that sounds good. Obviously an interview will be taking place currently. I think we're still doing virtual interviews. So that would require doing a video kind of like a zoom thing, but with the camera on. <laughs> and so that, that, that would take place. And then once that interview is done, the hiring manager would determine if they were going to move forward in the process. And if that, if that was the case, obviously then you would, the candidates would be receiving their uh, offer letter and other documentations to start the process of hiring. Fantastic. Thank you for that, Rob. And kind of building off of that question, um, you know, how can a candidate stand out and get an interview, assuming that they are qualified for the position in which they are applying? Is there anything that you suggest folks perhaps highlight in a resume, something that they bring up or some sort of experience that they bring up during uh, the interview, anything of that nature? Uh, sure. I mean, one, I mean, just like any interview, show up on time. <laughs> you know, that's, that's number one. But uh, second, I would definitely think that, you know, obviously being personable, obviously, as you heard me speak about, you know, the requirements, again, you know, being, you know, having customer service and being able to interact with the customers is going to be a big key. You know, uh, you know, obviously, that's probably the bit, you know, probably one of the biggest ones, obviously, being able to, like I said, familiarity with, uh, you know, physical labor, so to speak, you know, I mean, being like I said, I mentioned, you know, be working outside, working with your hands, you know, tools, etc. Having that type of, you know, you know, knowledge, even if it's a personal knowledge, I mean, again, you know, I, you know, like, for example, me, I've, you know, I, again, I'm, you know, my, one of my hobbies is, you know, you know, like auto mechanics. Okay. I've never been an auto mechanic, but I know how to do all that. So see, that's something because I have a familiar, a fami you know, I'm familiar with it. So that's something that again, you know, bring up, or maybe, you know, you have that type of, you know, working knowledge. Those couple of things are definitely going to, you know, help the, pro help the process because that's kind of the things that we are definitely looking for because somebody's going to be comfortable in this type of environment. Again, having a job that potentially you've worked outside, you don't have that, you don't have any issues of what I've mentioned about working out in the elements. You know, that again, that's always going to be a plus. Fantastic. Thank you, Rob. And another question that I have for you, uh, kind of building off of that, what is the general work attire that you expect folks to have? And then kind of building off of that is a question that I actually receive uh, more frequently than you would think. And that is, are there any sort of clothing allowances that you all provide for uh, the folks who work for you? Uh, well, one, the, the, the shirt or the, you know, shirt or, co you know, shirt or uh, top, top wear is going to definitely be provided. But again, the, um, due to the type nature of work, uh, people do are required to wear a uh, work boot. So, you know, work boot is going to be in then like jeans or whatnot. We're not, unfortunately, when it's really, really hot and we are not, we cannot wear shorts. So, you know, that, so, so, you know, obviously wearing pants and boots and we provide like kind of like our, the, you know, the company, company shirt for work and no to the allowance because we're giving you the, you know, the company top wear, you know, where it says Cobble Communications on. Understood. Thank you for that, Rob. And we did receive a question in the chat. I do recall at the beginning of your presentation that you said uh, your area does extend outside of the state of Illinois. I don't know. Yes. Um, more particularly if it's in the areas that are mentioned in that question or not. Looks like Indiana. Uh, I don't know if Cabo well, reaches there. Well, uh, definitely. It was, it's actually even bigger than that. I mean, uh, Cabo, again, like I said, is a sister company to Prince Telecom. Prince Telecom is national. So, uh, again, you know, Cabo, we obviously, you know, under the Cabo, Cabo it, we, you know, uh, Detroit, uh, Central Illinois, it goes all the way to Rockford, Illinois, and all around Chicago, Chicagoland. But again, also then when you talk to Prince, we're going all the way up to Milwaukee, Green Bay, we go Montana, we go the whole Eastern seaboard, the Western seaboard, Texas, Arkansas, 
all of it. So you see, so it goes more bigger than just the Chicago land area. Fantastic. Thank you, Rob. And if you did have applicants outside of the state who wanted to perhaps explore opportunities with Cavo, what would you suggest they do uh, in order to do so? Well, if they are out of state and they're looking to go into, like what I just mentioned, the Chicago land area, you know, uh, obviously they would go to the Cavo, uh, Cavo communicate, you know, the website CavoCommunications.com. But I, I think the biggest thing to look at, because also if we go to the Prince Telecom, PrinceTelecom.com, it it with the same same you know web page looks the same, pretty much. When you go to careers, it brings up the whole United States map and also includes the Cabo jobs on it. So it shows us every job that we have under the whole both companies. So definitely, you can take a look into anything and obviously, always willing to relocate. Obviously, this job does have capabilities. Once somebody gets comfortable and you know you know comfortable and they proven themselves there might be opportunity if they're willing it, there might be some travel involved if they're choosing we always start up new new areas in the country that we are looking to have travelers people that maybe spend you know 60 to 90 days in a different part of the country to kind of help us get uh, up you know kind of uh, ramp up a new a new part of business for us great thank you for that rob and then I just go, I do want to go ahead and just pause here briefly to allow the folks on the call to ask any sort of questions that they might have. If you do have any questions for Rob regarding employment with Cavo, again, please feel free to enter them into the chat and we will get those answered for you. Uh, we did get another question, Rob, and uh, the question here, it says, what is the website he mentioned rather than Cabo.com? It is princetelecom.com. So again, that that's you know again that's going to be p r i n c e t e l e c o m dot com. Prince, like you know, king, you know, prince, princess, you know, prince, and then telecom dot com. And that and that it. This website looks very similar to the Cavo one and you just go to the career page on the career tab at the top right and it will show you every job we have nationally. Fantastic, thank you for that. Much appreciated, Rob. So we're kind of nearing the end of our session here today, Rob. I do have one final question that I'd like to ask you before we begin our wrap up process. The question is, what are the opportunities for advancement with your organization? And are there any particular success stories that you would like to highlight for folks who are on the call? Yep, I mean, absolutely there is uh, room for advancement. Again, most, a lot of the supervisors and also managers, operation managers have at one point in time started out as a technician. Uh, so if there's definitely a possibility within the market that you're working, there are definitely someone again, there might be an opportunity to open up somewhere else other than in the, in the company, somewhere else in the country. There's always that capability to have happen. And the probably the success story that I would say is our vice president of our, our West division started out as a technician. So <laughs> that's a pretty, that's a pretty success story that he started. He started, I mean, Prince, the, you know, the parent company many years ago as a technician, he worked his way up to be, you know, operations manager, area manager, and to today, he is the vice president of our West division. Fantastic. Thank you for that example, Rob. And Rob, I do want to give you one final opportunity to, you know, give any sort of summary statements that you'd like to make regarding today's session, or perhaps uh, re-emphasize or highlight anything that you covered here today for the folks who are on the call or who will be tuning in at a later date. Um, definitely want to hi uh, highlight the uh, hiring bonus. That is a phenomenal opportunity, that $1,000 uh, bonus. Again, that's being paid out, you know, in installments, but again, it's a $1,000 hiring bonus. So it's not, we often uh, normally do, you know, hiring bonus for experienced, you know, meaning people that are like basically had a current job that are doing, you know, something similar coming right to us, we'll give them a bonus. But this time we're doing a hiring bonus just with no experience. So that's a wonderful opportunity to take advantage of. So I get, you know, I welcome that. You know, that's probably something I definitely want to hire. I mean, would not like to highlight and hopefully, you know, again, we'll see some candidates, you know, coming through the, our application process. Fantastic. Thank you for that, Rob. 
And again, I just do want to note uh, before we end the session here today that it has been recorded. It will be uploaded to the Illinois WorkNet YouTube channel here shortly. Once it has been uploaded to the channel, I will link it to the Cavo employer booth on Illinois WorkNet. You'll be able to access that link and refer to anything that was covered here by Rob today. Uh, if you do decide to move forward with the application process and there's just anything that you wanna brush up on, please feel free uh, to take a look at that video. And again, you know, cover anything that uh, might be unclear to you, vague, ambiguous, just so you're prepared for the uh, application and interview process. Rob, I wanna thank you again for joining us today, for giving your presentation and being uh, flexible to stick around to answer some questions. I'd like to thank everyone who uh, joined the session today as a job seeker and folks will be tuning in later. Um, again, you know, this video will be accessible at a later date. If there's anything that you need to refer to, uh, please feel free to do so. Thank you all for joining. I hope you have a wonderful day and a great upcoming weekend. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.